Like many woodworkers, I've got a ton of clamps. But with my recent shop updates, they've just been piling up in the corner. So today, let's build a clamp rack worthy of the wood shop on Timber Biscuit. So this build's gonna start by breaking down my sheet goods. And for this project, I'll be using Baltic Birch plywood. Since I just finished up my tool cabinet a few weeks ago, I still have some scrap left in the shop, which will be perfect for this build. So I went into this project with the goal of both consolidating all of my clamps into one location, as well as trying to minimize their footprint. So all these strips are gonna come together to create a wall-mounted solution that won't jut out far into the shop. I've seen a lot of variations of clamp racks over the years, but a lot of them stick out too far for my taste. So I wanted to try to make something as compact as possible. So now that we have some of the parameters laid out, let's get into the build. So here what I'm doing is cutting out my strips, which will ultimately become my shelves, as well as my back panel and sides for my clamp rack. Now, like I said, I want the shelves to be as compact as possible, but there's also a lot of weight that needs to be supported by these shelves. So I took that into consideration when designing the piece. And before I forget, while we're talking about the design, if you'd like the plans for this project, they'll be linked down in the description. So once I have my strips cut out, I can set up my table saw with the cross cut sled and cut down my side pieces. From there, I could take those off cuts and rip them down one more time so that I could create a couple support blocks that will sit under the shelves and help support all that weight. So from this strip, I'll cut out 10 blocks and I'm just going to use my cross cut sled again to cut those out. And anytime I'm making repeatable cuts, a stop block definitely helps. So I just set that up quickly with a clamp and get to work. Now at the end of these cuts, things are going to get a little tight. So the rear end of a number two pencil helps keep my fingers away from the blade. And then from there, I can discount double check my dimensions and lay out my mise en place. I'm sorry to my French folks. All right, so next I needed to set up a dado stack at the table saw. And for these initial cuts, I'll be using a 3 8 inch wide setup. Now I decided on that number because it fits all my brand of parallel clamps, but it should also fit all of yours too. Since I don't have one style of clamp or one brand of clamp for all my clamps, I wanted to make sure that this was modular as possible. So once I had my dado stack set up, I just aligned my two shelves and used some double stick tape to hold them together. This way when we cut all the notches over at the table saw, the strips will stay aligned throughout the entire process. So next I just set up my fence as a stop and then use my miter gauge and a couple of clamps to cut in the notches. Now with this setup, I was able to cut in my first set of notches and then rotate the entire piece and cut in the second set. So each time I move my fence from here on, I'll be able to set it up for both sides of the cut. I was just careful to make sure I was putting downward pressure on the piece when making these cuts so the weight stayed over top of the table. To ensure that I had the proper spacing between my notches, I just use a stop that I have connected to my table saw's fence. Again, we only need to move the fence once for every two cuts. Another pretty vital part of the setup is a sacrificial board on the back side, as doing so prevents any tear out from the actual shelves themselves. I would say the biggest thing to pay attention to here is just making sure that your sacrificial board is on the correct side. It's easy to start getting into a rhythm in this type of procedure and forget to move it, and obviously that wouldn't be ideal. So speaking of a rhythm, once we get things set up, it goes pretty quickly. So while I'm finishing that up, let me take a quick moment to say that if you're enjoying this video, please give it a like. It helps the video spread to more people, and I really appreciate your support. Thank you. All right, so the next step was to cut out our smaller notches for our smaller clamps. And for that, I'm going to set my dado stack up with a quarter inch setup. Now, from my experience, this will fit any F-style clamp or any quick release clamp. But that doesn't include any clamps with extra large throats. So just like before, once I have my initial cut set up, I just move my fence over to center the notch in between my previous notches. And for the smaller clamps, I'm only going to notch out the lower shelf, as the upper shelf will need the space for the parallel clamp jaws. And with the notches all notched, we can start laying out the profile for the sides. Now my side profile is going to mimic the till we made a few weeks ago, and I feel like that will make the whole set feel pretty cohesive. So I just used my template from that project on this one. And for the bottom profile, I just use a roll of tape to create the curve. So I think it goes without saying that you can use kind of whatever shape you like for this. Just try to stay within the dimensions of the project. So the next step was to cut everything out over at the bandsaw. And all that's pretty straightforward. I'm just going to stay about a 32nd of an inch away from my line. And then we'll clean all that up with some sanding later on. The main thing here is that we want both of our sides to be the same. So some double stick tape holds my two pieces together so I can cut them both out at once. So once I have my two side pieces trimmed out, I could cut that same curve into my support blocks. Again, these will add strength to the bottom of those shelves to make sure they don't sag over time. Now with this type of thing, I don't think you need to make a template for a router table or anything. I think it's quick enough to just trim them out of the bandsaw and save yourself a little time. 
And while it's not always the case, for this project, I think close enough is good enough. So from there, I could bring the pieces over to the bench and clean up those saw marks. And for that, I'm just going to use my random orbit sander and quickly touch up the edges. As with any time you're sanding edges with the random orbit sander, just be careful not to stay in any one place for too long or you'll risk rounding over those edges. But contrary to the edges, you should stick around here. So if you're enjoying this project, hit subscribe. I put out new videos about tips, tricks, and woodworking projects all the time. So hit subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks for your support. All right, so next it was time to lay out our joinery. And for this one, I'm gonna be using pocket holes. So once I've laid out my pocket holes on all of my work pieces, I just use my pocket hole jig to drive in the pocket holes. Now, while I'm not a huge fan of pocket holes for furniture, I think for shop projects and for cabinets, pocket holes are awesome. But if you wanted to go a different route, you could opt for using dowels, dominoes, or biscuits. I just think pocket holes are a great solution for this project. You just gotta be okay with taking sawdust showers. Don't worry, you don't need a towel. The one thing I will say is just try to be mindful about where you place this joinery. So on the top where the shelf goes, for instance, I made sure to place my pocket holes facing the ceiling. This way at ground level, you'll never see them. And for the lower shelves, since they'll be below eye level, I placed them on the bottom. All right, so with all my pocket holes wrapped up, I could place a chamfer around the outside area of my sides. Now, while I could go crazy adding chamfers and roundovers to all my pieces, I just decided to do the sides here so that they felt a little bit more finished and kept the remaining hard edges. Again, this is to mimic the style of the till that I built since these are gonna be sitting on the wall right next to each other. But if you're wanting to test out edge treatments, I think this is a perfect project to do so since again, it's shop furniture. So have fun with it. And finally, we're on to assembly. Now the setup for some of these is a little tricky, so we'll cover them step by step when we get there. The first thing I needed to do was attach the lower shelf to the lower back panel. So once I applied my glue, I just used some brad nails to hold everything in place while I drilled some pilot holes and then drove in a couple screws. Straightforward enough. From there I marked the center of the shelves on my larger back panel. And this mark goes on the back side of that panel. This way I can pre-drill from the back side and align those holes to the center of the shelf. Next, I flipped the back panel over and used two F-style clamps to hold that top shelf in place. From there, I could precariously go under the piece and drill in the screws from the bottom side. Then I could once again flip everything over, pre-drill my holes, and flip everything over one more time to attach the top shelf. Since I have a little bit more of an ability to adjust this top piece, I went ahead and used brad nails again in place of the clamps. And like the shirt says, I knew this would work. And hey, if you enjoy the show and you want to support the channel, I'd like to invite you to join my Patreon, where you'll get discount codes on shirts like this one, an invite to the Discord server, a discount on plans, and some other free stuff. So if that sounds like something that would interest you, be sure to check out the link down below. And again, to those who've already joined, thank you guys so much for your continued support. It means the world. All right, so now that my two sides are attached to my top panel, I can go ahead and squeeze in that bottom panel. And again, we just attach that using some glue and pocket screws. The last pieces to attach are the shelf supports, and those just go on with some glue and some brad nails. Now, like most of my shop furniture, I'm not gonna put any finish on this piece. And that's not because I don't think that it needs it. It probably does. But I just like the natural look of wood in the shop. I don't know, call me a purist. So I just decided to leave it as is. But if you have a favorite finish you like to use in the shop, let me know what it is down in the comments. Once I have all my pieces attached, I went ahead and hung this piece on the wall. And I just did that by driving in some screws into some studs. From there, I can take all my clamps and load this bad boy up. So yeah, the saying goes, as a woodworker, you can never have enough clamps. And now I've got a solid solution to store all of them. Plus this solution doesn't take up a ton of space and I think it's a pretty modern design. Not to mention it matches my other shop furniture, so it makes everything feel like it's supposed to be there. Unlike that pile of clamps at the start of the video. So hey, if you enjoyed this video and you wanna see more like it, make sure you subscribe. Check out this video over here next, and like always, I'll see you next time.